Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today we are checking out three new members of the standard series of microphones from Universal Audio. Now, the standard series has been very popular because they're affordable microphones that offer outstanding performance, great sound quality, they come in at great prices, and they have the added bonus of hemisphere microphone modeling. Now these don't require a universal audio interface. You don't have to have an Apollo, you don't have to have a satellite or anything like that. They'll work with any audio interface and you can use the uh, mic modeling with any DAW that you might be using as well. So the existing members of the standard series are the SD1, which is a large diaphragm dynamic. You're hearing it on my voice here. There's also the SC1, which is a large diaphragm condenser, and the SP1, which is a small diaphragm condenser. So those are the existing members. They've added three new members, and all three of those are dynamic microphones. First up, we have the SD3. This is a cardioid polar pattern microphone. It'll handle high SPLs, has a hand-selected capsule, just like all of the standard series. It's all metal construction, just like all of the standard series. So fantastic quality, comes in at a great price as well. And as we'll hear, it sounds great just as a dynamic microphone. And then again, we have that bonus of being able to add microphone models on top of this to really shape the sound. The second of the new microphones is the SD5. Now, looking at this, this is a beefy microphone, all metal, and it's pretty clearly intended for kick drum, bass instruments, bass guitar, that kind of thing. Again, a dynamic microphone, in this case a super cardioid polar pattern, has great low end response, and we can apply those models on it after the fact as well. The third of the new microphones in the standard series is the SD7. Now this has an integral stand mount, as does the SD5. Very easy to place on toms, works great on guitar amps, I used it on a saxophone as well. So this is a very versatile microphone, has a hypercardioid polar pattern. So to check these microphones out, what we did is take them into Sweetwater's video studio along with the SP1 and the SC1. We set up a drum kit, had Casey Cooper sit down behind to play some drums for us. I started out with a four mic setup. We had an SD5 on kick drum. We had an SD3 on snare, and then we put a pair of SP1s as our overheads. Next, we set up a full miking setup on the drum kit. So we had that same SD5 on the kick drum, and actually I added a second SD5, so as we can see, we can apply two different models to those. We put an SP1 under the snare drum to pick up that extra rattle from the snares. We had an SP1 on the hi-hat microphone, and then we used three SD7s on the toms. And for room mics, we used a pair of SC1 large diaphragm condensers. So that gave us a total of 12 microphones on the drum kit. Next, we brought John Griffith into the studio to play saxophone for us. We used an SD1 as well as an SD3 to capture the sound of his saxophone. Now, these have different mic models that you can apply to them, so it'll be interesting to hear the results when we start switching those around on these mics. Finally, we brought Don Carr into the studio to play guitar. We mic'd up the guitar amp with SD3 and again with the SD7 so we could compare those in the different models that they support. Don did both clean guitar examples as well as dirty guitar examples. So let's jump over to my computer, we'll load up Pro Tools, we'll apply the Hemisphere plugin to all these microphones and listen to what these models can do, as well as how good these microphones sound just as raw dynamic microphones. So I've loaded up my session here into Pro Tools. You can see I've got everything arrayed on the timeline here. I've got my four mic capture here, my 12 mic capture here, individual drums, two different saxophones, and then my guitars are down here as well. Now I've went ahead and instantiated the Hemisphere plugin on each one of those tracks. The Hemisphere plugin is what provides the modeling for us. Each of these microphones supports five different models, and there's also a three position filter on each one of these microphones as well that we can access from the Hemisphere. The microphones themselves are super clean. There's no switches, there's no controls at all. They're good straight ahead dynamic microphones, and everything else that we want to handle is inside the Hemisphere plugin. So let's open this up. Inside the Hemisphere plugin, we choose which microphone we're using. In this case, I've got the SD5, it's on my kick drum. And then we choose the model that we want to use. And again, we have five models per microphone, and the models are different depending on which microphone you're using. So in this case, we have the 12A, the 112, the 52, the 6, and the sub kick here as well. So those give us a variety of different tones, as we'll hear. Now, when you choose the microphone that you want to use, I've selected the DN6 here. Here's our three position filter. We have a proximity control. When we turn that up, it's as if we're moving the microphone closer to the source. When we turn that down, it's as if we're moving further away from the source. And we'll listen to what that does. We can also change the on or off axis response of the microphone. So we can model being 180 degrees off axis, 90 degrees, and so on. Power is basically our bypass. We have an output control, and we have a polarity invert here as well. So everything we need for shaping the sound of our microphones is right here inside the plugin. I've gone ahead and applied that plugin across all my tracks, and now let's listen to what we can do. 
So I'm going to go ahead and open up my transport, and it's Command 1. If we click Command 5, I'll get my memory locations, and Command 9 gives me a video window. We went ahead and loaded in the video of the different performers, so we can watch those as we're working with the plugin as well. So let's go ahead and start with our four mic setup. I've got a kick drum mic, the SD5. That's this larger microphone that's on the kick drum. I've got the SD3 on top of the snare drum, and then I've got two SP1 small diaphragm condenser microphones overhead in stereo. So let's select all those, and now if we Option Command click, we'll bypass all those plugins. What we'll be hearing is just the dry, unprocessed dynamic microphones on the drum kit. Now that sounds pretty good, just the dry microphones there. Let's go ahead and solo the kick drum. Here's our snare. And that's our overheads. When we listen to all four of the microphones together, That's a pretty great drum sound before we apply any processing at all. But let's go ahead and listen to what we can do when we add the plugins. First of all, let's just make them all active and listen to them with the settings that I currently have. Without processing. With modeling. Now if we go to the individual drums, so we'll solo the kick drum here, we'll open up its plug-in. And let's check out some of these different models. So we'll begin with, again, let's go ahead and bypass. We'll begin with the dry microphone. And now let's engage, we'll go to the 12A, very popular kick drum mic. Bypassed. And we'll do the same thing with the 112. Bypassed. Now, in addition to being able to choose the model that we want to use on this microphone, we can also process it with our proximity controls as well as our axis control and the filter. So I went ahead and put the 12A model here onto our SD5. So in this case, the filter is really shaping that bottom end. Now the proximity control, as I mentioned, models the effect of moving the microphone closer to the source or farther away. And the axis control is as if we're turning the microphone away from the source. Now if I go over to our snare drum, actually I want to put this back onto the mic I liked on this was the DN6, which actually gives us a little different filter response. Bypass. Pretty dramatically different. That filter really allows you to shape the response of the kick drum in this case. Let's turn that back off and let's go over to our snare drum. Now in this case we have the SD3 microphone. If we open up its plugins, our choice includes the 57. Bypassed. 
active. The 545, which is an ancestor of the 57. The 604. 409. And the DN4. Add the filter on there, just take out some of the bottom end. But even with the filter in place, if we turn up the proximity effect, we get a nice thud out of the snare drum in that case. Farther away. On our overheads, we had a pair of the SP-1 small diaphragm condensers. So they're being handled by a stereo version of the plug-in here. Again, we have five different models. This video isn't about the SP-1s, but you can see we have a 54, 56, the 84, very popular microphone, the 86, as well as the 451. Again, we can filter that. In that case, the access control really has dramatic effect basically the, the uh, result of flipping the microphone upside down over the drum kit. So when we bring all four of those together, again, we can bypass all the plugins. Pretty dramatic enhancement when we use that Hemisphere software to process those microphones. Now let's check out our setup when we had 12 microphones on the drum kit. So my second memory location here is that recording. I'm going to close the video window for one second. Let's select all of these tracks. You can see I've got kick drum in. That's in the hole that's in the front head of the kick drum. Kick drum out is a second SD5 that is placed against the head of the uh, kick drum. I've got a snare top, which is an SD3. We've got a snare bottom, which is an SP-1 small diaphragm condenser. We've got another small diaphragm condenser on the hi-hat. I've got three of the SD-7s that are on the toms, a pair of SP-1s on my overheads, and a pair of SC-1 large diaphragm condensers out in the room. So let's open up the uh, video window again. Let's go ahead and bypass all the plugins on those tracks and listen to the dry dynamic microphones. Like I said before, I'm actually really impressed with how these microphones sound just as dry dynamic microphones. I mean, I could easily work with that set of tracks in a mix. You could EQ that and process it however you wanted. It's good sounding dry tracks. But now let's listen to it when I engage the, uh, the processing that I've selected on all those tracks. Those are great sounding tracks, and with the processing from the Hemisphere plugin, applying those mic models, we're really getting a great sound out of the drum kit. So on the, uh, the SD5 that's in the hole in the front of the drum kick, I've selected the DN52. I've got it set basically just flat here, no filter, no proximity effect. It's on axis. On the second uh, SD5, which is in front of the kick drum, I've set that up as a sub microphone, so all we're getting out of that is basically a lot of bottom end that we're adding into our mix. Bypassed. And with the sub, you can hear the dramatic difference that that makes. 
On our snare top, I have the same SD3 that I was using before, and I've set that up in this case with a 57 microphone. On the snare bottom, we've got that SP1, and I've selected a 451 as my small diaphragm condenser model there, and that's really just getting the buzz from the snares on the bottom. Now, when we combine that with the, uh, the other microphone, the 57 that's on top of the snare, we get this. On our kick drum, I should also show you, this is our uh, uh, SD5 that's in the hole in the front of the head. This is our sub kick. And this is both of those together. On the hi-hat, as I mentioned, we've got an SP-1. You can see I've filtered that to take out some of the bottom end so we're not getting quite as much bleed out of the toms and out of the kick drum. On the toms, I have SD7s. In this case, I've selected the 409N as my microphone. On the first tom, which is the rack tom, the first floor tom, I've also got a 409N on, and the, uh, the second floor tom, I've also got a 409N on that one as well. So we've got 409N microphones on all three of those. Let's listen to the three of those together. We're getting nice solid tom response out of those. When we combine that with our overheads, we get a big sound out of the entire kit. Now on the overheads, I've got a pair of SP1s, and I've selected the 86 in this case, and I've also filtered out some bottom end there. I don't want too much kick coming into my, uh, my overhead, so I can just blend in the attack of the drums and also all my cymbal work on top. Our room mics are a pair of SC1 large diaphragm condensers, and I've set those up with a 67, a new old stock model of a Tube 67 microphone. So when we bring all those microphones together, bypass. So we can listen to the individual drums as well. Here's a kick drum. Our snare. Tom. Tom 2. It's got a great ring on that, Tom. Tom 3. Here's our hi hat. And our overheads. And then once again, our full kit. Now these are just the microphone models that I've selected for these individual drums. I like the way they sound. You might want to use a completely different set of models. But regardless, at a very affordable price, we've put together 12 microphones that give us a great picture of the drums. I'd have no problem using these in a track at all. Sound fantastic to me with the processing or even without the processing. Now let's jump over to saxophone. Here's the SD7 on the sax. <laughs>
we have so much control over the sound that's coming through the microphones using the Hemisphere plug-in. But again, the SD7 just sounds fantastic as a dry mic on the uh, saxophone. Let's jump over to the SD3 version. In this case, we have a different selection of microphones. Great sounding microphone as well with a lot of options there. If we go to clean guitar, So that was the SD3 microphone that we were hearing on Don's guitar there. We can also, I also recorded this with the SD7. Lots of tones there as well, and I like the 160, which is a ribbon microphone. On the dirty guitar tracks, I also did the SD7 and the SD3. Now we recorded both those at the same time so we can use them individually or in combination. So if we start with the SD3, in this case. <laughs> This is our SD7. Now that microphone has more bottom end to it, so you can hear a little bit of thumpiness on the bottom. Let's go ahead and raise that low cut filter a little bit. But a really cool effect is combining the two of those together. I'm going to pan them slightly here, and let's listen to both. That's 
That's a big guitar tone. So the beauty of these new microphones, along with the existing members of the Standard Series microphones, is the versatility that they provide. It's like getting an entire mic locker every time you buy one of these microphones. And when you have all the microphones, you really get a complete microphone locker. You can fine-tune things exactly the way you want them to sound. So many possibilities. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the three new members of the standard family of microphones from Universal Audio. The SD5 kick drum, bass instrument microphone, the SD3 cardioid dynamic microphone, and the SD7, which is awesome on toms and other instruments as well. With these three microphones, along with the SC1, the SP1, and the SD1, Universal Audio really has a comprehensive set of microphones for recording all kinds of instruments and voices. And with those mic models, you can tailor the sound to exactly what you need for your tracks. Be sure to check these out at Sweetwater.com or give your Sweetwater sales engineer a call for complete information about the entire standard series and how the Hemisphere software can help you really fine-tune the sound for exactly what you need for your recordings. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.